Hi, it's Carmen. Welcome to my channel on living with rheumatoid arthritis. I'm going to start a series on rheumatoid arthritis and pain and some of the um, methods, medications, um, things that we do to treat pain and rheumatoid arthritis in my experience. Uh, I've had rheumatoid arthritis for uh, over 20 years and one of the drugs that I was given the first time I saw a rheumatologist was um, an NSAID, a non-steroidal anti-inflammatory. So I have been on some type of non-steroidal anti-inflammatory for over 20 years. Uh, mostly it's been diclofenac. I did have a year or two on uh, Celebrex. And I think that's off the market now. I hope it is. Um, so I've done some research for this video and I'm going to try to keep it short. Maybe do two videos. One on um, some of the studies of, of what the side effects are of taking NSAIDs. And then a second video um, on some of the treatments for those side effects. Um, I, like I said, I've been on the medication for 20 years. I just stopped the medication in November this year. So um, almost uh, November, December, January, three, three and a half, four months I've been off of it. And um, I haven't noticed a big difference in my pain level. When I was first diagnosed, or actually just, you know, first seeing a rheumatologist, I was in so much pain. And this was um, in the years before um, biologics. It was in 1995. And um, the non-steroidal anti-inflammatory and then the steroids, um, prednisone, were some of the first things that they would um, treat you with. And for me, the NSAID became a long-term treatment. I feel that I was not informed of the uh, serious side effects from NSAIDs. And um, I would like to think that I would have gotten off of it sooner had I known what the serious side effects were. So I'm just going to tell you what some of the studies that I have found. I'm going to link, you know, two or three studies down below. So if you really like to get into the science of it, um, you can through those articles and through the um, references and citations that are in those articles. So that way I can try to keep the video short. So although they really seemed to help me in the beginning. When I decided to get off of them, um, when I saw my doctor last in November, I didn't notice anything. I just stopped in one day. I didn't taper off, um, and I was taking it, taking it in the morning and at night. And honestly, I didn't notice anything. I had a really bad headache for about three weeks, and that's it. That's all I noticed. And so. I think I probably could have gotten off of this medication sooner if um, my doctor had encouraged me, which I wish she had have encouraged me. Um, the reason that I wanted to get off of it was because my um, GFR um, blood tests were uh, getting lower and lower in the last three years, and um, that had me worried. Um, that's kind of a kidney function test, and. I didn't even, when I was originally looking up that GFR and what it meant, um, it did list NSAIDs as being um, a a damaging to the kidneys. But the research I did for this video today, I didn't, I didn't even look up that to confirm that, so I could be wrong. Um, the main thing, the main side effects of NSAIDs is um, small bowel inflammation uh, for rheumatoid people. So they used to think uh, when they did autopsies on rheumatoid people that the inflammation in the small bowel and uh, the lesions and bleeds and ulcers were f um, part of the progress of the rheumatoid disease itself. But now that they have better um, diagnostic tools, they can go all the way through um, the intestine and uh, look at it and they have done um, definitive studies on rheumatoid people that have never taken NSAIDs and rheumatoid people that do take them and 40 to 70 percent of rheumatoid people that take NSAIDs um, over like six months have ulcerations, inflammation, um, bleeding, lesions and um, permeability uh, issues which 
means that the bacteria and even bile in the intestine can leak out through those lesions into the system and cause uh, problems. So um, it's asympt asymptomatic, this, uh, these stomach issues, most of the time. The NSAIDs also cause problems in the stomach um, and uh, most in the stomach. And that used to be the focus um, as far as treatment together with NSAIDs, they would um, start just in like the last five years giving uh, proton pump inhibitors, omprazole and Prilosec, stuff like that, because it, uh, it keeps stomach acid from developing. But what they have found now with the new diagnostic tools that they have to look deeper into the, uh, the uh, small bowel is that the stomach is only one issue. The small bowel is where it uh, really takes the hit uh, from the NSAIDs as far as side effects. And the omprazole and Prilosec and those types of drugs do not help that at all, not even a little bit. So that my current uh, rheumatologist, I've had her about four years now, she started me on the omprazole um, right away, saying that, you know, to protect me from issues with the NSAIDs. But she said, um, after years of NSAID use, it's pretty much 100% that you're going to have some of these uh, ulcerations and lesions and things um, in your stomach. So I had thought that I really um, dodged the bullet on that and because I hadn't had any symptoms and I thought well great I'm getting on the omprazole and I won't have to worry about that side effect but it's asymptomatic for most people there's a small percentage that will have um, gut pain um, but most of us don't uh, they can do uh, stool testing if um, to check and see if there's inflammation um, in the small bowel they can also test for um, bacteria and stuff that might be leaking out if you have lesions and things. And then they also have now a um, endoscopy. It's a wireless little capsule that you swallow and it goes all the way through your intestines and they can get pictures that way. So it's a fairly non-invasive procedure, I guess. And um, I guess now I know that I do have those issues and those side effects because there's three big indicators in blood work uh, when you start to have these um, lesions and ulcers in your intestine and that is um, uh, iron, iron deficient anemia from um, bleeding, you'll get that, and um, vitamin B12 anemia. So I have both of those. I have had uh, probably the iron deficiency for about a year, and I've had the B12 deficiency for, I think it was just my primary care found that over five years ago. And it hasn't come up even with the medication. And the other thing that happened earlier on that I read that is an indicator that this is happening in your gut is um, high level of neutrophils. Those are white blood cells um, that are going in there um, trying to fight off the bacteria and stuff that's leaking out of your gut. And um, I've had very high neutrophils uh, okay, oh, off and on, you know, off and on over the years. So anyways, I feel a little bit uh, dismayed that I didn't know that there was these, this almost for sure side effect with NSAIDs. I'm glad to be off of them. Um, I also had misconception about NSAID. I thought that it was treating my rheumatoid arthritis. I thought by reducing the inflammation that it was protecting my joints um, from destruction, and that's not true. It's just a pain reliever. So it does work um, by reducing inflammation, but it's not to the point where it um, has any um, effect on your disease progress. So it's not a treatment, it's an it's a analgesic. So I, I was surprised by that, I didn't know that. So as far as getting the diagnosis, like I said, there's a stool test that they can do, three different ones, testing for different stuff, and then they can now do that uh, capsule endoscopy. And um, if you do have it, have these issues happening in your gut, um, they're trying like um, antibiotics, um, 
antivirals, sulfasalazine, which is a drug that's used for Crohn's disease. So they're trying to, the first thing is that you have to get off the NSAID, that's the best thing you can do, and then they, they're they going in and, and trying to treat it with these antibiotics, although it's not proven to have be helping much yet. So I'm sure that the drug companies are working on something to give us. Um, I did come across quite a bit in the articles I was reading that um, a real kind of shame on the drug companies for pushing the Omprazole and Prilosec on people because it really doesn't uh, help the situation. My doggie's crying. I think she has to go outside. Okay, sorry about that. I got interrupted. I had to take my dog out. So I think I was just uh, finishing this up because I don't want to make it too long. Like I said, there's a couple treatments they're trying, antibiotics and stuff like that, that they aren't finding that they really work. Um, so I'm going to see my doctor in a week and a half. I'm going to talk to her about um, if it would be helpful at this point to do uh, the endoscopy and also if she has any idea about newer treatments that I just didn't come across since, um, like I said, I have those two anemias, which pretty much for sure means that I, I have uh, this small bowel disease. And um, so please talk to your doctor if you're on the NSAIDs and if you've been on them a long time, I know you can take them um, as needed. And I never knew that either. I was never told that, but a friend of mine takes it as needed for an inflammation condition she has. And I know uh, one of my family members also did when occasional, you know, tendonitis, and they would take it occasionally, and I, I never could figure that out because I thought you had to take it consistently, and you don't. You can take it as needed, so that would obviously be a better option than taking it every single day and every single night. So I hope you're well. I hope this finds you well, and please uh, comment below if you're taking NSAIDs, if you've had any um, issues, symptoms, tests that you've had done, and um, yeah, so I'll follow up on this after I meet with my doctor next week. And I hope you're well. Um, all right.